What's going on internet, IG back again today and this is a disclaimer right at the start of this video that I originally recorded the review for this video with OpenSUSE Leap 15 on a virtual machine on my host system. Now, I encountered some interesting issues with the recording of that video where because of Kwin, I believe, the virtual machine, the frame rate, it runs at like three frames per second, if that. Unfortunately, uh, I went and actually full on went and installed OpenSUSE on my main host machine. And that's what you can see running here. This is what is gonna be editing this particular episode on the channel today. But, uh, and I tried re-recording the video on native hardware and the, the video looks great. But honestly, if I'm gonna be uh, critical of myself, the, the video was not nearly as good as the original that I had recorded. I don't know if it's a one take wonder ordeal, but honestly, I did not want to upload the re-recorded version uh, because it's just, I don't know, it's so much more boring and bumbling than the original one. So bear with the fact that this the visuals of this video uh, run at three frames a second. I'm going to try and chuck in some footage of, of the, the the system running on native hardware over the top of the, the footage of the virtual machine that runs at three frames a second. But I hope you enjoy the, the commentary of that video because I feel it's vastly superior to the one where I tried to re-record it. So with that, all that said and done, let's get into OpenSUSE Leap 15 review. Now, there's a couple of distinctions to be made right off the bat here. OpenSUSE 15 Leap is the kind of the long-term support release model of OpenSUSE, which in itself is the community arm or the community distribution of SUSE Enterprise Linux or SUSE Linux Enterprise or whatever, however you want to say that. So it is a company that is behind OpenSUSE, but it is the community driven arm. And out of all the distributions that I've seen, I feel like OpenSUSE balances that act between being a uh, an arm of a company, but also being a community driven distribution. And so that's what we're going to be checking out today. OpenSUSE Leap 15. This has been out for a little while and the only reason I'm looking into it now is because uh, as I mentioned in my last video, I have a bit of an issue with distro hopping at the moment. And uh, and honestly, it's been a very long time since I checked out OpenSUSE. In fact, the last time I seriously checked it out was before they had moved to their uh, different numbering structure. So if you're not familiar, the, uh, the OpenSUSE uh, releases, they jumped to a, a different numbering structure to what they were prior, um, whereas they've switched back to the previous numbering structure now. So the the 15 release or the the 15 the version 15 coincides with the same version as SUSE Linux Enterprise. So basically, this means that when it comes to cross compatibility between those two, you can upgrade or migrate very easily from the community driven distribution to the commercially offered one. And uh, and I think it's a great move for a distribution that is all about uh, it's all about giving a power user or giving a system admin uh, the best possible tools in the best tested, most stable environment possible. That's the goal of OpenSUSE Leap as opposed to OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is the rolling release bleeding edge version, but it's also actually pretty stable from, from what seems to be the general opinion out there on the internet. Now I have not tried the tumbleweed release for myself. Uh, I am considering, I am considering moving to it as as a as a trial run to see how it goes. But right now, here we are with Leap, and um, and okay, so this is where I want to start out talking about the things that I love, and then I'm going to talk about some things that still kind of uh, still kind of irk me a little bit about OpenSUSE as a distribution. Okay, so the things that I love, um, the, the the number one thing that permeates through this distribution is professionalism. Uh, there's so much going on in the Linux world. There are so many different distributions. Um, but when you come across a distribution like OpenSUSE, and uh, I've mentioned it before, but OpenSUSE was one of the first Linux distributions that, that I came into contact with, I couldn't help but be amazed by just how professional this distribution was. Um, and in fact, just for funsies, I'm going to link back my original review on the Infinitely Galactic channel way back in 2010, I think, 2010. Um, and that was of OpenSUSE, I think, 11.3. And, uh, and I said the same back then and I still say the same now. This distribution comes across as very professional from the moment you install it. Now, 
about that installer. Now, I don't have any sort of footage or screenshots of the install process, but that's because it is largely driven by Yast and you cannot watch a video on OpenSUSE on the internet without it mentioning Yast. And there's a reason for that. I don't think there's many tools like it in the Linux world or frankly, even in the Windows world these days. Now, what I will say is that there is some duplicated functionality here. So as amazing as Yast is and as wonderful as a tool as it is, this gives you a graphical interface. It gives you, it gives you buttons to click on to configure literally anything and everything about your system. And it does so all at a system level, uh, at a system admin level. What does that mean? It means you don't have to keep entering and re-entering your password to change things. You don't have to go in and edit config files in a text editor. You don't have to jump into the command line and start throwing commands around. All of this is managed through a graphical user interface. And that is the beauty of Yast. And I'll just get that out the way now, because uh, honestly, it's one of the biggest things that OpenSUSE has going for it when it comes to being a professional power users, system admin users distribution. Um, so now the thing is that on from a user's perspective, from somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, and honestly, that's not OpenSUSE's uh, user base and they're not trying to be. So this is a mute, this is a bit of a mute point, but stay with me. The, the duplicated functionality that you that is present here um, it is getting better and better with time. What do I mean by this? I mean that KDE also has its own system settings, right? You've got the YAST control center and you've got system settings. Now, once upon a time, it used to be very confusing as to which settings panel to go to to change what. Nowadays, it's pretty straightforward. If you wanna change anything to do with uh, what you see and interact with on your desktop, chances are you're gonna come into system settings here. This manages all of KDE's desktop uh, KDE's desktop and personalization. The YAST control center controls everything to do with the lower end of the, or the underneath layer of your system. And, uh, and honestly, there isn't a whole lot of duplication going on here anymore, but there still is a little bit here and there. Um, now, one of the, one of the most obvious things in KDE is the software management side of things, right? So in order to manage software on OpenSUSE, you have the standard KDE discover software center which, yep, I, I'll save my thoughts on this for another time because honestly, you can find this Discover um, Software Center anywhere. Um, it is getting better with time, but it is it is still a little bit lacking in features and, and functionality, a little bit of spit and polish here and there wouldn't hurt. Um, but you also have the uh, software management tools that come with Yast. And in my experience, uh, and just in the recent version of playing around in this one, the the software management that you do through Yast is far more reliable and thorough than it is through Discover. Case in point, um, just earlier today, I went to install Kdin Live, which is the one of the best video editors out there that Open Source World can offer, um, and. Kden Live, I went to install it through the Discover software manager, right? So I found it in Discover and I said install it. And I just went, you know what? I'm just gonna give this a go, see what happens, right? So that's what I, I clicked on install. I gave it my root password and away it went, or so I thought. Uh, I waited at the progress bar completed and then I went looking for it on my system. So I went down here into the menu, multimedia, blah, 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 and it wasn't there. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I opened up Yast, looked in the software manager, searched for Caden Live, and saw that it wasn't ticked, it wasn't installed. And the reason being was because it was missing some dependencies uh, that were from the community uh, from the community repository. And it was unsure that by default, Yast will then uh, ping you and say, hey, do you want to transfer which repositories these dependencies come from? And, uh, but of course, Discover didn't prompt me for that. It just didn't do it. And so it does leave a little bit of confusion if you're not sure what you're doing. Now, Yast, on the other hand, you can come in here, you can ask it to install anything, and it's gonna give you the full uh, it's going to give you the full amount of details you could possibly want with uh, with what the packages like what's in there, what are their dependencies, um, all of that fun stuff. Uh, like this is the, the the most detailed package manager or one of the most detailed package managers you can possibly find. Uh, the 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 amount of uh, attention to detail here is just unparalleled. Uh, and so from a power user's perspective, I appreciate that. I love that but the duplication that you get between that and the KDE front end for managing packages is a little weird. Okay, so I love Yast. I don't exactly love um, the, the disconnect between system level stuff 
and desktop level stuff. And I think that tension's always going to exist, quite frankly. But the fact that over time they've been able to whittle down which options are managed where uh, is really nice. Now, here's another little um, gripe that I have. Uh, so while I love Yast, um, and here's a really good example of the power that Yast has versus uh, versus desktop customization. Now, one thing that's always irked me about OpenSUSE is the font rendering. Now, font rendering, uh, if you're not familiar, there's there's some interesting libraries caught up with how to make smooth font management, uh, or sorry, smooth font rendering. And, uh, and by default, a lot of the Ubuntu-based distributions ship with it. Um, distributions like Fedora and OpenSUSE tend to try to avoid it. Um, but it's pretty easy to install, but OpenSUSE doesn't make it very clear on how to do that. So in order to get smooth fonts, you've got to go grab a, another repository, download a library, and then customize your settings. Now, the funny thing is, is that here under system settings in KDE, I'm using system settings for my anti-aliasing, aliasing, anti-aliasing settings. I think that's how you say that. And, uh, and that's great because what that's doing is that's pointing me to the fact that I have already configured the fonts through Yast which I did. So if you come in here and you, even if you go down into the menu and you search for fonts, you can see you've got a couple of different options here. You've got one from KDE, you've got one from Yast, and you've got one from uh, KDE's font management, which is a different thing altogether. So you come into Yast, you look for fonts, and you, you can see by opening up this configuration, you can configure fonts across the entire desktop from the root level, not just specific to KDE. So, Yast is wonderful, but a power user would not know where to go looking for that, if that makes sense. Now, the only other thing that I wanna highlight before I just kind of get into, the, get into some uh, final minutia is that uh, when it comes to default, um, when it comes to default partitioning with OpenSUSE's setup, I gotta say, I really appreciate what these guys do when it comes to creating a, uh, a very forward thinking um, system partition. Okay, so I'm going to jump into Yast just to show you guys. And again, I realize that there's probably other videos out there on YouTube that also highlight this about SUSE or about OpenSUSE. But Snapper and the uh, the BTRFS file system is uh, they work hand in hand. And I think it is amazing that you can come in here and simply roll back to a previous configuration of your system that was working great. And the fact that this is so well baked into OpenSUSE and it's such a mature feature now um, that honestly, if you were a power user that loved to tinker, this would be your dream situation because you could always roll back to an earlier configuration. And I know other systems like Mint and, uh, and, and other distributions are getting to this point, but OpenSUSE has been doing this for such a long time now that honestly, their, their support for being able to roll back to an earlier configuration and, uh, and not have it affect your user files and that kind of thing is sheer genius. And the fact that when they, uh, when you do the initial setup, they give you a very um, non-threatening uh, default layout that they suggest. And by doing that, they, um, and for me, because I'm running in a virtual machine, they recommended that I create a separate boot partition, a root partition that was BTRFS and had several sub volumes, and then also obviously a swap partition. And that was with 20 gig, they busted up all of this um, by default, uh, and this is what they recommended. And I was like, wow, this is this is good stuff because not only does it take out a lot of the complexity of setting this up yourself, but the fact that this is ready to go out of the gate means that for those users who are going to uh, maybe jump onto Tumbleweed or something like that, where it's a rolling release, maybe not as stable and stuff is gonna break, they can really, really easily, even from the freaking command line, go back and roll back to a previous, uh, to a previous, uh, to a previous version of their distribution or a previous snapshot of their system. I, I think that's amazing and it's incredible. And the fact that yes, it does use a bit of background resources. Um, Snapper, I've heard complaints here and there of the fact that it does consume uh, sort of extra resources here and there. But in everyday use for me, and especially this being on a virtual machine, um, I haven't really noticed its use. So just for funsies, as we wrap this thing up, let's have a look at uh, KSysGuard and uh, let's have a look at just how much it's using at the moment. So I have 0.69 gigs 
of memory being used, which is pretty admirable. We all know that KDE is pretty slim these days. You can see the CPUs are barely doing anything at all. And, uh, and the fact that OpenSUSE can give you a lot of tools out of the box that are predefined, set up like a professional would set up your PC with your best interests at heart as a power user, I think this distribution deserves a lot of respect. And I think, uh, frankly, it's quite an underrated Linux distribution uh, in a lot of people's books. Um, so honestly, I've, I've got a lot of great things to say about OpenSUSE. And the only negatives that I have uh, for those who maybe don't exactly uh, or aren't exactly familiar with the inner workings of how Linux works or maybe aren't power users. And frankly, ca you can't even really fault OpenSUSE for that because it's not the demographic that they're chasing. Um, so great community base of a very solid enterprise Linux distribution. Uh, am I going to run this as my daily driver? Honestly, I don't know yet because the little things that do irk me that put me off just a little bit are the fact that there do seem to be a, a few package management uh, uh, conflicts that you get when you enable a community repository such as Pac-Man, which you basically have to do if you want to install media codecs and that kind of thing. Again, all of this is stuff that a power user shouldn't have an issue with dealing uh, with, with fixing themselves. Do I want to have to deal with that? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't yet know if the benefits of having all of these powerful tools on hand outweigh the extra clicks and upkeep that OpenSUSE brings to the table. Also, the only other knock that I'm gonna give it is the fact that it does feel a little bit heavier when it comes to booting up, shutting down, updating, that kind of thing. I feel like it does use quite a bit of uh, bandwidth to do its updates, and also I feel like it takes a little bit longer to boot and shut down and that kind of thing than your average distribution. But when it's actually up and running, no complaints in terms of system uh, system management and system resources. So that was a very long and, uh, and full on kind of video. Um, but I hope this helps some of you out there who maybe have been considering OpenSUSE from a distance. Um, and hopefully it helps you decide whether you want to run this distribution as your daily driver. One final note that I will say is that OpenSUSE Leap 15 is by far the most stable KDE desktop I have used in a long, long, long time. I've not had a single KDE Plasma crash. I've not had a single system crash. Uh, this system is fully up to date in terms of what version it's running. It is running the uh, it is running the the long term support release of the KDE desktop anyway. Um, but you can see here we're running the kernel 4.12. We're running 4.5.12.5 for the software. Um, so all of this stuff is uh, all of this stuff is very impressive to me. It comes across as solid, professional, reliable, and really that's all you could want from a distribution in this day and age. Well, that'll be all from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. Don't forget about the bell and I will see you in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.